The Bible says, it, the tongue no man can tame, it is, it is unruly, it is evil, and it's full of deadly poison. And Christians, if you don't realize this quickly, trust me, you will go down very quickly. It's very, very important that you understand what your tongue is. It is poisonous and it's deadly. All right? You don't want it clearer than that. Praise the Lord. It is good to be with you today on Shekinah. I hope you had a great week with your families. And we are going to pray now. And I would like to say, send some birthday wishes to two people, special, two very important people, special people, I should say. God is good. Jen, I would like to wish you a very, 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 very happy birthday. May God richly, richly bless you. You're a lovely girl. And... Uh, I know that God will give you the grace and the strength. And I pray you will have a great year in the Lord as you move on now to your new milestone. God bless you, Jen, and we love you. Him Chan, uh, I would like to say um, I am so sorry to hear about your brother-in-law's death, but on behalf of myself and my family and the church, we would like to extend our uh, condo condolences and we are praying that God will give you and your entire family the strength and the grace. I know that Jesus is able, more than able, to comfort, to bless and strengthen and keep. God bless you, Him, John. Just stand strong. God bless you. Kevin, I would like to wish you a very, very happy birthday. Another fine young man. I want to say thank God for you, Kev. And we love you very much, and may God bless you too, and keep you, and may you have a great year in the Lord. God is good. Okay, we are going to come in agreement right now. Father God, today we give you praise, and we bless you, and we worship you. We thank you, dear God, for your goodness. We appreciate you, Lord, more than ever. My God, in the name of Jesus, as we join our hearts in agreement for this program today, we ask, dear God, that you will prepare the hearts of your people. And we pray, God, in the name of Jesus, that you will bless your people and open their spiritual ears to hear what the Spirit of God is saying to the church in this hour. Father God, we have to prepare ourselves, for we know that 2024... It's going to be a year of years. And Lord, in Jesus' mighty name, we all have to be ready and be very, very prepared in Jesus' mighty name. So God, we just thank you for all these messages, and it's in Jesus' name we pray. Mighty God, just bless your people and bless all their families. Those who are sick right now, dear God, in their homes, in those homes, bless them, God, and we thank you for the miraculous. We know that you're a miracle-working God. Bless them and heal them and strengthen all your people. Today we ask, dear God, in Jesus' mighty name, that you will bless me another time and unctionize me. Father God, and I pray that as I depend on the Holy Spirit to bring forth this word, to give me the utterance to bring forth this word, I know that you're a God that never fails. Mighty God, I praise you and thank you that you will anoint me and bless me and strengthen me now with the grace, mighty God, and in the name of Jesus. I need your presence, Lord, more than ever. Without your presence, I can't do it. And without your Holy Spirit, I can't. 
And Father God, I praise you and I thank you for the power that is in the blood and for the power of the Holy Spirit. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Praise God. We are going to go to um, Proverbs 21. Before I go to the message, I would really like to explain a few verses in Proverbs 21. And um, sorry, in all right, what we're going to do instead of going to those verses. Let me start the message, and then I'll do the explanation at the end, because I want to finish this message today. God is good. I just realized it's a bit lengthy to read that now. However, we're going to go to Proverbs chapter 18. Proverbs 18, verse 21. Proverbs 18, verse 21. Thank you, Lord. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they who love it shall eat the fruit of it. They who love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Again, I'll read that. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. They who love it shall eat the fruit thereof. There are many, many Christians who get in trouble with God, not only once in a while or once a week, but daily. We get in trouble with God because instead of speaking life, which is the word of God, instead of speaking life, we speak death all the time. And the fruit we have to understand that if you're constantly talking doubt, in effect, you're talking death. And those who speak the word of God, they speak life. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. You have to, you have to understand that your words are very, very powerful. Let's go to verse 20. A man's belly shall be, just, shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth, and with the increase of his lips shall he be filled. Now, if the fruit of the mouth and the increase of the lips be heavenly, then there is inward, of course, you know, inward contentment. If not, then there is inward desolation. You see, there is very important that you speak the word of God. A lot of Christians like to gossip. When you gossip, you're slandering people. You have to understand that gossip is not of God. It's of the devil. And when you slander people, it's of the devil because the devil is always an accuser of the brethren. So you have to be careful what you speak. If you're constantly saying, oh, it's difficult. I can't make it. I cannot do this. God, God will not, you know, he will not provide. God is taking too long. I pay my tithes. I, I go to church. I... You know, I do everything, and why I'm not blessed? And Well, you check your tongue. Maybe that's why you're not blessed. Because all you're doing is speaking death. Speak life into your situation. In other words, speak positive. That's a more simple word. Speak positive, okay? You don't have to speak death in every situation in your life. That's what the devil wants. Because what you confess is what you will have. Most definitely, what you confess you'll have. Now, we're going to go to the book of James. 
the book of James. Praise God. The book of James. And we're going to go to James chapter James chapter 3 from verse 1 to 18. James chapter 3 from verse 1 to 18. Now I'm going to read. My brethren, be not many masters, knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation. For in many things we offend all, and if any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man and able to bridle the whole body. Now, what James is, is, is saying here, that there, you know, we offend people all the time by the way we speak. And we have to be careful with our words. And he's saying, if any man offend not in word, the same shall be a perfect man. Now, a lot, a lot of people think that, you know, perfection is very difficult. I'm not saying that anybody is perfect. None of us are. But it's something that we have to strive for. If we don't strive for perfection, we will never reach perfection. All right? The Bible says in Matthew chapter 5, verse 48, be ye perfect, even as your heavenly Father is perfect. All right? So God is looking for a people who would strive for perfection. A lot of preachers would say, we will never, never be able to arise to that place. Well, I don't know. Um, I am not saying that, you know, you have to, you, you, you will be that real perfect person and, and you know, you won't, you, if without that you can't make heaven. Now, I would say that we have to strive for it. All right? It's not something that comes overnight. But you have to strive to walk pure like Christ. Praise the Lord. You have to strive to be like Jesus. You just want to be like him because he's coming back for a people like himself. Praise his name. So James is saying, if you don't offend with your tongue, in other words, you, you don't offend with word, you speak the word, you, whatever comes out from you, it comes out you know, from the tongue, right? So you, out of your tongue comes out all kinds of stuff. So James is saying, if you... Don't offend it with your tongue. The same is a perfect man and able to bridle his whole body. Now, only the Holy Spirit can help you to bridle your tongue. Only the Holy Spirit. And as you yield, as a Christian, as you yield your life to the Holy Spirit, you will watch your words if you are growing, if you're a if you're a Christian that is bearing fruit, if you're a Christian that you're in the Word, right, and you are praying, you will not be careless with words. If you are truly living in repentance, you know, every single day you're going before God and you're saying, God, you know, I make many mistakes all the time. My thoughts are not clean. My thoughts are not pure. Lord, please help me and please forgive me. And help me to, to have a pure heart before you. You know, you humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God. And once you're yielded to the Holy Spirit and you're praying and you're in the Word, you will, you will speak you know, you will watch what you say. You are not going to be careless with words. You're going to think before you speak. And what we need, it's not the message for today, but we really need to cry out to God for godly wisdom. We need to be very, very wise. And 
that message coming very soon on divine wisdom, the wisdom that comes from above, not the wisdom, not the wisdom you get, you know, in the universities and whatever, whatever, from your library or whatever. No, 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 I'm not talking about that. The wisdom that comes from above. But what I want to say is, if you're careful with words, what James is saying here, you'll be able to bridle your whole body. If you can control your tongue, the Bible says he that cannot control his spirit is like a city with broken down walls. You have to control your tongue and the Holy Spirit can help you to do that all the time. Praise God. Here, listen what he says. Behold, we put bits in the horse's mouths that they may obey us. And we turn about their whole body. Praise God. With the horses, right? You have, those of you, you know, you, you love your horses or whatever, whatever. Um, you know where I'm coming from, right? You have to put bits, the Bible says, in the horse's mouth. If you don't, you will not be able to control that horse. That horse will control you. All right? So, if you have to do that with the horses, you have to understand, as a child or children of God, you got to control your tongue. And only the Holy Spirit can help you as you yield your tongue to the Holy Spirit. Some of you need to repent for a whole week regards your tongue, the things that you say, and the negative stuff that comes out your mouth is not funny. Do you know what you confess or profess you will have? What you say you're going to have, your words are powerful. There is death and life in the power of the tongue. Praise God. Now, verse 4. Behold also the ships, which though they be so great and are driven of fierce winds, yet are they turned about with a very small helm, whithersoever the governor list. Praise God. The helm is, is likened here to the tongue. When I was very, 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 very young, I don't know, it was, I was about, I don't know, eight or nine. Now, from where we live in the village, you have to take a ferry, you know, a huge boat. You know what I mean. And you have to cross over with that boat to another um, wharf. And then you take a car from there and then you go. You take a cab from there and you go to the city. And the city is Georgetown, right? And inquisitive me, I was traveling. I don't know if it's my brother, sister, or mother. I can't remember that. But whoever I was traveling with, I said to them, I need to go up to the captain's cabin where he has to steer that boat. You know, the, the Bible calls it a, a helm, right? Now, I said, I need to go up there to see how he steers this boat at that age, you know. And whoever I was with, whether my, my, my brother or sister or whoever, they asked permission if I can go because I make this request. And whoever they ask, they went to ask the captain, and the captain says yes. Because, you know, you have to do things in order. So I went upstairs, and I went straight in. So I stretched out my hands, and I introduced myself to the captain. And I said, sir, I would like to see how you steer this huge boat. I want to see what you do. So he's showing me this, this thing looking like a wheel, right? A small. And he's like this. And he's telling me, this is how you have to steer the boat. 
So I said, whoa, that little tiny thing, just in my own little words, right? Remember, I'm only eight or nine, whatever. I said, this little tiny thing can steer this whole boat? And he laughed, and he laughed, and he laughed. And, but the striking thing is, you know, it was so, I stood and I looked there, and I said, whoa, this little thing looking like a little wheel, and he's just turning it. Now, your tongue is the same way. If you were going to train your tongue to say and do and, you know, things that will hurt and harm, you're going you're gonna to create a lot of pain and hurt. And those things are really not pleasing to God. You got to control your tongue. You got to be able to steer your tongue in one direction. And that one direction is you are going to speak God's word. And you try to move away from the word and just say what you want. Whatever comes to your mouth, you speak. That is not right in the sight of God. It's the work of the devil. And what you say, you will have. And if you slander people, you know, the Lord, will, the Lord will deal with you and very, very harsh. It's not easy. You know, you can, you can, you can bring death into a person's life. I'm not talking about physical death. I'm talking about spiritual, right? You can cause a person to die spiritually when you put them down and you cut them up. Then they're going to go and they're going to meditate on what you say. All right? That's the Christians who have, you know, no kind of solid ground. They get, uh, in other words, there is, um, there is a saying, you know, they are very thin-skinned. They can't handle any, any, anything. All right? They're very thin-skinned. And what they do is, because... They don't have roots, and they're not grounded in the word. They, they are offended very, very easily. And you can, you can kill everything spiritually in that person because they're going to meditate on what you say that is, you know, that is so, so bad and hurtful. They're going to meditate on that. And once they meditate on that, before you know it, you know, they're, they're going to, well, God, what's the use? What's the use? Look what my own brother and sister is doing to my life. Because it's Christians that attacks Christians. I'm going to say that again. It's Christians that keeps attacking Christians. But when you are solid, listen to me carefully. When you are solid... When you are grounded in the word, when you are a praying person, when you know your life, because if you don't know you, then who knows you? You're going to want people to tell you who you are, all right, and what you are? No, no, no. You have to know who you are. And if people are putting labels on you, your life is not defined by labels, all right? If you know who you are in Christ, words, I don't know for you, but words for me, harsh words, hurtful words, I am not going to tell you a lie. I would make sure I get rid of that within half an hour. I will not let it linger because I know what is said. It's not true. You have to know who you are in Christ. All right? But if you're not solid and if you're not rooted and grounded in the word, guess what? All right? You're going to fall for what Satan has planned for you through that person, through that other Christian. Because it's Satan that uses them to attack you all the time. And guess what? Many times it's envy. Many times it's jealousy. 
And many, many times they think, well, okay, if I cut her up with my tongue, with, you know, then of course that, that will really, really, really put a dent in their Christian walk. Don't let anybody put dents in your walk with, with God. You are not defined by labels, all right? God has your back. And if you are rooted and grounded, you, you can stand strong and say, Satan, what you just did there, you know what you can do with that because that is not me. All right? Praise the Lord. You have to know who you are. When you know who you are, let the attacks come because you will stand and you will stand strong against the enemy. Praise God. Even so, the tongue is a little member and boasts great things. Behold how great a matter a little fire kindles. I want you to picture what, J what James is saying here. The tongue is a little member. Let me tell you, your tongue might be small and everything, but it exerts powerful influence. The devil is a liar. Be responsible for what you are saying, all right? Be responsible. And you must understand that you will hear as we go on how dangerous the tongue is. Praise God. The tongue, James says in verse 6, is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members that it defiles the whole body and sets on fire the course of nature and it is set on fire of hell. All right? So let's dissect this. The tongue is on fire. This is speaking of fire in a negative way. In other words, the tongue is a fire that which you speak can very well destroy. I think I explained that uh, before I get to verse 6. I think you understand very well what I mean. A world of iniquity. The tongue, in some way, or many ways, is responsible for all the iniquity in the world. So is the tongue among our members. All right? I'm, we're talking about body members. It defiles the whole body. Constantly speaking in a negative way can bring about physical illness in the body. All right? So this spirit of defilement, because of you not being wise as a Christian, all right, you can cause physical illness. I just use the word spiritual death. You can bring about such hurt and such discouragement in people's lives with your tongue when you slam them. It's very important that you go to God as a Christian. All of us need to do that. Spend one whole week on your tongue. One whole week in repentance. For the many, many, many times you cost so much on your own self, on your own family, because of your tongue. Sets on fire the course of nature. The tongue sets on fire the course of nature. The tongue is a part, sets a particular path. And in this case, the wrong path. It is set on fire of hell. By using the word hell, we are made to understand not only the wickedness of the tongue, 
but as well its destructive power. The tongue is wicked. All you speak is wickedness and evil. And an evil person, a wicked person, a person who is bitter inside, a person who has, you know, lives in resentment and pride and, and you know, a person who, who is not really rooted and grounded in the world. These are the people that slam you down. And it's sad. It's very, very sad. For every kind of beast, watch this, verse 7, every kind of beast and of birds and of serpents and of things in the sea is tamed and has been tamed of mankind. And that has been proven a fact. Look at, look at you know, dogs and cats. I mean, when you train them, they are trained, boy. You tell them to sit, they sit. You tell them to come, they come. And you name it, and many, many other animals. But verse 8, the Bible says, But the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly, evil, full of deadly poison. The believer must realize this, that your tongue is evil and it's poisonous. And if you don't realize this quickly, God is not pleased when you rip up his people apart and call them all kinds of names and, and you, 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 you slander them. You, you, I mean, you just do what you have to do because all you want is vengeance and whatever come out, that is what you say. The Bible says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So because you want revenge and you want, you, to, you, you, you want to take vengeance, the same thing, right? You're just going to slam people down, excuse me? There is a God in heaven that sees it all and knows it all. And if you have problems in your life with someone or, or, you, or with, with people, you need to take it to God. Let God judge them. When every single day I would say, God, judge me according to your word. That is a good way. Because in Jesus' name, it shows humility. I would say, God, judge me according to my heart. Judge me according to your word. You have to do that. You don't have to have you know, cliches and all kind of hang-ups against people. No, no, no. You don't do that. You are messing with God's children. Don't do it. You can't say something good. Don't say it. You are hurting and you have problems with people or someone. Take it to Jesus. Take it to Jesus. You know the songwriter, he says clearly, what a friend we have in Jesus. What a friend we have in Jesus. Jesus is our friend. He's our savior. He's our Lord. He's our king of kings. He's our soon coming king. He's our all in all. Take it to Jesus. You'll find a solace there. Praise God. You don't take out whatever you have inside on people. You will get in big trouble. That's why you see so many Christians are in trouble with God. All right? You just can't do that. That's a terrible sin. Stop the gossiping, please. Then you put all kinds of things on your phone and you send it out. Watch this. Listen to this. Um, watch this preacher. Hear this song. Why don't you shut up? 
and go in the presence of Almighty God. I'm so happy I never own a cell phone. And trust me, I don't think I ever want one. All the junk. Listen to what? You go and pray and get some anointing. Go pray and, you know, enjoy God's presence. Go pray and you trust God for spiritual growth. Go pray and trust God for spiritual fruit. Some of you, you have your music on every single day. You don't know if that artist is gay. You don't know who they are. You don't know how much drugs they are. But you sit there and you bask in their presence. Listen. Christians, get some sense. You go and worship God in the beauty of holiness. Sit down and worship him every single day of my life. And this is no exaggeration. I spend quality time worshiping God before I go into prayer. I am putting on nobody music to worship. Excuse me. I don't know who they are. And when it comes to me, I can really tell you this. I can discern the anointing, and I can discern flesh. And I have no time. No time for the garbage. None. I'm not saying, you know, you send a scripture out, you know, on your phone every day. A little scripture to, you know, to encourage whoever. But some of you, you really overdo it. Man, you really have time on your hands. No wonder some of you are so messed up. Anyways, let me leave that. I'm on the tongue. The Bible says, it, the tongue no man can tame. It is, it is unruly, it is evil, and it's full of deadly poison. And Christians, if you don't realize this quickly, trust me, you will go down very quickly. It's very, very important that you understand what your tongue is. It is poisonous and it's deadly. All right? You don't want it clearer than that. Now, let's go. Therewith, bless we God, even the Father, and therewith curse we men, which are made after the similitude of God. How can you slam each other down as Christians? Watch what James is saying. We are made after the similitude of God. We are made, in other words, in God's image. So what are you going to do with God's image? You're marring God's image? Praise the Lord. You are just marring God's image? You got to be careful. Many of you are in trouble with God. Take a week and spend on your tongue and repent of all the people you hurt in life. All you witches, you sit in church and you sit in your gatherings and you're chanting. Aren't you afraid that God can make you dumb? Aren't you afraid? You remember what he did with Zachariah? When Elizabeth was pregnant, <laughs> he became dumb, you know. I'm not going into that now. We need the fear of God more than ever. You don't sit in a church service and chant over people and chant over the preacher. And, and, and you're, you're there and you're hissing and you're just like an snake. And you have your crowd and you have your functions and, and you're cursing everybody. Hexes and curses and spells. Aren't you afraid? 
be sure of this one thing. This almighty God is not sleeping. Whatsoever a man sow, you have to reap. It's a terrible thing. Terrible. The tongue, it's deadly. It's poisonous. I know Christians, they cuss. Swear, you know. And you know the, the words. They swear. That same tongue they want to bless God with. And that same tongue they're cursing with. It's terrible. You can't bless God, the Father, and the Father. Where it could be cursed men. You bless God with the same tongue and curse people with the same tongue. Be very careful. Out of the same mouth proceed blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not to be so. The Lord is the one that would have his way in the hearts and lives of man. God is the one who is seeing every single thing. He knows every grain of hair on our heads. He's the one that's seeing everything. He's the one that knows our motives. He's the one that has it all. Let him do what he has to do. Let him take the vengeance, not you. Uh, if you're a true child of God, walk the walk. Talk the talk. But no, you think that you, you know, you like hot pepper sauce that you can spew out what you want, anything, anytime, at any, at anything at any time. No, this God sees and knows it all. There's a fountain sent forth at the same time, at the same place, sweet, water, and bitter? Of course, no. Can the fig tree, my brethren, bear olive berries, either of vine figs? So can no fountain both yield salt, water, and fresh. Praise God. This speaks, of course, of nature. However, man can do what? Nature can, what nature cannot do. Praise the Lord. You got to control yourself. You got to control your tongue. Don't you? You have people that will slam down a preacher. How do you do that? You don't remember. You don't read your Bible. You don't study the word. You don't remember Saul and David. When David had opportunity to kill Saul, you know what he said? How can I touch God's anointed? You don't mess with God's servants. Touch not my anointed and do my servants no harm. It's a serious thing. Don't mess with a man or a woman of God that walks and lives. You're in grave trouble. Spend one week on your tongue. It's deadly. It's poisonous. Praise God. Now, who is a wise man? And endued with knowledge among you. Let him show out of a good conversation. His works with meekness of wisdom. This all refers to your lifestyle. The conduct of the believer. Praise God. Now, we are going to go to James. We're, sorry, we're going to go to Proverbs. Proverbs 15. 
Proverbs 15, 4, very quickly. Proverbs 15. We'll, we'll go from 1 to 5. A soft answer turns away wrath, but grievous words stir up anger. Listen to this carefully. The tongue of the wise uses knowledge aright, but the mouth of fools pours out foolishness. The eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding the evil and the good. A wholesome tongue is a tree of life, but perverseness therein is a breach in the spirit. If your tongue is tamed and you speak God's word, all right, Solomon is saying here, a wholesome tongue is a tree of life. When you speak words of life, you encourage people. When you speak to someone, all right, your words are soft, they're encouraging. It's just, Sometimes it's so difficult to know that Christians filled with the Holy Spirit, how they carry on. Take control. If you don't take control of you, Satan will take control of you. You can do it through the Holy Spirit. If you have him, praise God. Now, a fool desp despises his father's instruction, but he who regards reproof is prudent. And let us go now to verse 7. The lips of the wise disperse knowledge, but the heart of the foolish does not so. Praise God. Knowledge, knowledge from the Bible, knowledge from the Word of God. And you don't want to be a foolish Christian. You don't want to be called a foolish person. You need to be wise. And you need to be wise through the Word of God. Only the Word of God can make you wise through the Holy Spirit. Now we'll go to... Proverbs 21. Proverbs 21. Thank you, Jesus. And listen what it says. Verses 19, 21, 19. It is better to dwell in the wilderness than with a contentious and an angry woman. Praise God. 23 and 24. Whoso keeps his mouth and his tongue keeps his soul from troubles. 24. Proud and haughty scorner is his name who deals in proud wrath. This concerns, this two verse concerns the man or the woman who treats his fellow man with pride and contempt and violence. Of course, and it's a terrible sin. You got things in you, deal with it. Just deal with it and quickly. Praise the Lord. We'll go to Proverbs 31. It's talking about the virtuous woman. Let's go to Proverbs 31, verse 26. She opens her mouth with what? Wisdom. And in her tongue is the law of kindness. She opens her mouth with wisdom. Be wise. Seek wisdom. You're getting that message coming out very soon. And in her tongue is the law of kindness. As we all know, this 
Proverbs 31 is about the virtuous woman whose price is far above rubies. And it is said here, you're a virtuous woman in your tongue should be the law of kindness. Let's go to Proverbs 12. Proverbs 12. And we will go to verse 6. Proverbs 12. The words of the wicked are to lie in wait for blood, but the mouth of the upright delivers them. Upright men and women always benefit in society, but evil men and women destroys a nation. Let's go to verse 13. The wicked is sneered by the transgression of his lips, but the just shall come out of trouble. The wicked is snared by the transgression of his lips. I want you to really ponder that one. Many times what comes out of your mouth because you're so evil, you're so wicked, you have no wisdom, you are just exposing your own self. Let's go to verse 14. A man shall be satisfied with good by the fruit of his mouth, and the recompense of a man's hands shall be rendered unto him. You think about that one. Let's go to verse 18 and 19. There is that speaks like the piercings of a sword, but the tongue of the wise is health. The tongue of the wise is health. Thank God for the few preachers who have the tongue of the wise. Thank God for the few Christians who have the tongue of the wise, which is the Bible, and which gives spiritual health. You want to enjoy health? Watch your mouth. Watch your words. All right, let's go to 19. The lips of truth shall be established forever, but a lying tongue is just for a moment. Stop telling lies. Train yourself. You're going to speak the truth. When you tell lies, don't you know that it's a terrible sin? Why do you have to lie? Think what you have to say carefully. And if you can't tell the truth, don't speak. Don't say anything because you're getting in trouble with God all the time. Praise God. It's very important that you understand. James 1. James 1. And listen to this. I'm going to close with this. James 1, 19 to 26. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear and slow to speak and slow to wrath. Where are you going to find that? For the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. Wherefore lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness, and receive with meekness the engrafted word, which is able to save your souls. But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if by a hearer of the word, if you be a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he he beholds himself uh, and goes his way and straightway forget what manner of man he is. Uh, but whoso looked into the perfect law of liberty and continues therein, be, be, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. If any among you seems to be religious and bridle not his tongue, but deceives his 
own heart. This man's religion is vain. Pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and the widows in their affliction and to keep him, to keep himself unspotted from the world. If you don't bridle your tongue as a Christian, you're deceiving your own heart and your Christianity is vain. This little member in the body, think about it. It's deadly. It's poisonous. I would like to entitle this message, Bridle Your Tongue Before It's Too Late. Bridle Your Tongue Before it's too late. God bless you. For those of you who would like to accept Jesus as your Lord, let's pray. As your Lord and Savior, let's pray. Loving Heavenly Father, where I've sinned against you in thought, word, or deed, wash me clean and forgive me. I do repent, Lord, of all my sins. And I invite Jesus into my heart as my Lord and my Savior. And my, mighty God, in the name of Jesus, give me a desire to study your word and to pray and to find a Bible-believing church that believes the whole word, not half, not part, the whole truth from Genesis to Revelation. And God, it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Okay, Christians, pray with me. Repeat, dear Lord Jesus, as a Christian, I have said many, many things. I have hurt many, many people with words. I have slandered many with my tongue. Mighty God, in the name of Jesus, as a child of the Most High God, all I know is gossip. I tell lies. I use swear words with the same tongue and blessing God. I turn and use swear words. Father God, in the name of Jesus, through the power of the Holy Spirit, help me to bridle my tongue. Let me take control through the Holy Ghost. Because if I don't control myself, I'm like a city with broken down walls. Lord, I'm really sorry for the many, many that I've hurt, all the damage that I've caused in the body of Christ, in the church, outside the church. I am sorry. Lord, I repent. And please help me to have a wholesome tongue. Mighty God, I thank you and I give you all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor in Jesus' name. Amen. God richly bless you and we love you.